Welcome to St. James Worship Online. We're so happy you joined us this morning. Now, we're a bunch of folks here that love connecting, so please leave a comment to let us know that you're here, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook. And also, if you check us out on Instagram and Twitter, leave a comment as well there, as well as like us. Share with your folks as well. Come on, we want to see your family members and your friends join us online. And also, if you're new to us, you can visit, visit our website at www.stjamestampa.org. Now, we do like to connect with folks personally, so if you have any prayer requests, please send an email to prayer at stjamestampa.org. Now, what do we have for you this morning? Well, we're going on a road trip, so this is something that we're continuing here with our latest sermon series, and in it, Pastor Tony calls us to just take a look at the most amazing journey that God has for us. It's going to take us to the most amazing destination that we could ever imagine. So what are you going to do when God calls you? Well, we'll find out more about how we can do that. And again, thank you so much for joining us today. Loving, creative God, we praise and bless you for your mighty acts of creation. As we gather here this day, we hear your message of power and love through the witness of Jesus Christ as he prepared his disciples for his departure. He gave to them the words of encouragement about living in your love and that through that love being witnesses to the whole world of your peace and hope. Be with us this day, Lord. Open our hearts and minds to receive your word. Amen.
as we have worshiped God this morning already in his grace that invites us to this time of worship in his spirit that unites us together invite us to this time of prayer this means for us to be able to be in close relationship with God to to converse with him to share what's on our hearts uh, to lift up our our prayers for ourselves and our others in, in need of healing and of hope and prayers for this whole world especially during a time of worldwide pandemic so I want to invite us to this time of prayer. Um, I will begin with the Lord's Prayer to bring all of our voices together. The words will be on the screen if you need them. And I'll offer just some time of silence for whatever might be on your heart. And then I will close us uh, with some words of prayer for us all. So let us commune with God this morning in prayer to him as we start with the prayer that Jesus Christ himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So Lord, hear the prayers we have on our hearts right now. Wonderful, loving Father, we thank you that you are ready to hear, that you are present wherever we might be, whatever we might have been going through this week. You know, for you have been there. And as we come and worship to you today, as we look to the future, we know that you are here and you are there in the future also. So we thank you, dear present God. So Lord, we... We pray that we can open up to your presence, that our spirits would receive your spirit here in this place, that the prayers that we lift up in our hearts, we do so from the depths of our souls, of, of our love for ones and our families, even ourselves and of this world. And Lord, we praise you that you love it all even more, and that you're a God who desires to be close and intimate with it all and with us all. So Lord, forgive us as we have journeyed through life and we keep you distant, we keep you in second place. We pray, dear Lord, that we would lay all of that down and let you truly be Lord of our lives, the ones to take the steering wheel. Because Lord, we need you. There are things going on in our lives and in this world that we, we simply cannot control on our own and they're far beyond us. The reality is, Lord, even before this whole COVID thing, all of that was the reality too, that there is so much to life and so much to this world, so much of our own lives and those around us that, that we truly cannot control. And so we seek the one who is in control. Lord, the prayers that we lift up to you, we pray for your healing touch. We pray for your word that brings order out of chaos. We pray for the hope that only you provide when all else seems hopeless. We pray you for the love that you give us to be present as you are with everyone around us, to love even our enemies, Lord. That is only a love that you can provide. So, Lord, we open ourselves to that love. We open ourselves to your word. We open ourselves to your spirit to live out that word in love to this world. So we pray for this world this day. Lord, it is so many months now that we have been struggling and suffering under this pandemic. Give us the strength to simply walk day by day. Give us the guidance and discernment to find vaccines and healing. Give us the courage to live in this and care for one another, but also knowing that we can bring life through you. So Lord, we thank you. We praise you for all of this. In the name of Jesus Christ, our God who came and walked with us and knows the very lives that we live, the pains, the struggles, and also the joys and the wonder of it. And Lord, we pray in your spirit that makes all of that real in us and all that real among us, no matter where we might be. In your holy name, amen and amen.
Well, good morning again, St. James family and friends. I am now standing next to our minivan here. I mentioned it last week in the sermon. Uh, again, we invested a lot in this minivan because we knew we were going to drive it into the ground. And for Hondas, that's going to be another 20 years. Uh, but it is just a great, comfortable travel vehicle for us. Uh, we needed a, a navigation system, so on Hondas that meant also that the kids get a screen to watch TV and movies and they get leather seats to sit in. Uh, so as you see in this image, it's a very comfortable car for them to travel in. And that's not what I grew up in. No, back in my day, this is the van that we drove in. Yep, 15 passenger Dodge van. And we filled that thing. Like I've shared, I've got nine siblings. So with my parents, it was 12 of us in that vehicle. Imagine three weeks in that thing, traveling across country with all the bench seats filled up. No one being able to relax anywhere. Yeah, so all the different things that we consider in the vehicles that we travel in certainly are important from first class to coach. That's nice, but really when we think about the journey and even the journey of life, it's the people we travel with and it's who we are in, with those people that is so important. So today we're gonna look at what it is to, uh, to have our traveling buddies through this journey of life with God. The people we bring along with us, the ones we meet along the way, and ultimately who we are to travel with as we go the journey of life with the Lord. So to uh, get us ready for the trip and the sermon, here's a little clip from the movie RV with Robin Williams uh, that just kind of was at the end of the movie sharing about what his experience was with his family and the people they met along the way. So let's enjoy this video and get ready for God's word to come into our hearts. It's been kind of a, a wild journey getting here. If you ever want to really find out about yourself, put your family in an RV and uh, drive. I've seen some amazing stuff. I've uh, fought wild raccoons and won. I've been in the desert to a place where it's not the end of the world, but you can see it from there. And I met this weird family. I mean, boy, they were strange. You know, whenever a big white man picks up a banjo, my cheeks tighten. In the dictionary under hoop name, it says, see them. You know what's strange about them? honest, good people. It's an honor to have them as friends. Welcome to the Foch Family Travel Mobile for our sermon this morning. And as we saw this clip, as we ponder this morning again, it's great to have wonderful vehicles to travel in in our lives. And like we spoke last week, that's the importance of our faith in living. That's the vehicle of, of how we travel with the Lord when we go out into the wilderness. But uh, this weekend, we, we want to consider God who calls us out into these places, but, but calls us out in relationship, that we have traveling buddies that we go along with here. And when we consider the, the travel of life, as we mentioned before, it's who we travel with on the journey, uh, it's who we meet along the way, and ultimately who we are as travelers with the Lord and with others that we are with. And so this morning, I want to take some selections of text out of Luke chapter nine. Again, our, our whole sermon series is uh, using Luke chapter three. It's John the Baptist's declaration of Jesus' ministry. And, and it begins again, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, of God calling us out in that place in the wilderness and being there for us and with us. But Luke chapter nine really is that pivotal chapter within the whole gospel of Luke. In this one chapter, we hear stories of Jesus first sending out the, the original 12 disciples. Uh, John the Baptist, the one who was proclaiming Jesus and starting his ministry, was beheaded by the king. So that ministry ends so that Jesus' ministry can begin. Jesus shows the disciples what it is to have enough and more in the ministry that he calls us into when he feeds the 5,000. But it is in this chapter that he is first proclaimed by Peter to be the Messiah, to be the Son of God. And in this chapter, that Messiah in Jesus, that Son of God, starts first to proclaim his turn to Jerusalem, his turn to the cross. And in that place, when he starts calling disciples to follow him and others to follow him, suddenly the weight of what it is to journey with the Lord is made real and evident. And so as we consider the travel buddies that we have and traveling with Jesus Christ, I want to offer the start of this in Luke chapter 9, starting in verse 51. And hear these words of Jesus' ministry on his way to Jerusalem. In verse 51, we start with, As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. 
When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they went to another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever I go. Jesus replied, foxes have holes, birds have the air, have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. This is very similar to what we heard last week, isn't it? Another man uh, Jesus called to and said, follow me. But the man said, first, let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. So y'all, as we consider this journey of our faith and, and being followers of, of Jesus Christ out into the wilderness and, and desire to be the best we can be with the people we are, we're traveling with and those we go to be with, let us center ourselves in prayer and see how God uh, speaks to us through this word this morning. Let us pray. A holy and loving God, we thank you for inviting us to this journey of faith and journey of love with you through Jesus Christ. But Lord, as we ponder our lives and the ways that we travel through and who we travel through with and who we might meet along the way and, and who you make us to be as travelers on this earth and, and to all those people, we pray that you would speak again through your word and let your spirit make it alive in us. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen and amen. So we're on this journey together here in the van. The boys are in the back watching a movie. I've got Darren uh, over here. Debbie's driving for us. We're all nice and uh, packed into this car here. And, and so as we first ponder these things about traveling with God, we, we consider the question of who we travel with on our journeys of life. And obviously, first and foremost for us in faith is to travel with Jesus. Jesus is the only way. Again, the scriptures proclaim we have been saved by God's grace, but through our faith, Jesus invites us to get into his vehicle to travel through, through, through life with. And, and as we have heard in the scriptures, we have Jesus uh, being out there in the wilderness calling as well. So we travel with Jesus, which is powerful, isn't it? Because first and foremost, let me remind us, it means we never travel alone in life that you always have someone with you, no matter where you might be. These words from Deuteronomy chapter 31, and these were spoken to the people of Israel as they were about ready to leave uh, Egypt from slavery and go into the wilderness and, and find the promised land. The Lord himself goes before you, the, the scriptures declare, and he will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. So may that offer you first and foremost, just the power of salvation, the hope that you have when you journey with Jesus, that you are never alone anywhere you might be. But when we consider following Jesus, when we consider getting into his car, the questions quickly becomes, are we traveling with Jesus? Or is Jesus simply traveling along with us? You know, a few years ago, it was great. There was a bumper sticker that came out that uh, we'll show an image of it here that said, God is my co-pilot. That's a pretty powerful image, isn't it? That we travel with God in our lives and we want him to be present with us in everything that we are doing and where we are going. But the reality that we see in the scriptures here, in, in, uh, in our lives and in God's eyes is the question of who's holding on to the steering wheel. Uh, and that's what we find in the scriptures here and these ones here of both the disciples themselves and also the ones who are unwilling to follow Jesus is that it's all about control, all about wanting to grab the steering wheel. Again, the disciples, when they go into this town of Samaritan village and, and don't uh, uh, get a welcome from them, they want to rain down fire upon them. Uh, but these others, uh, as we see this list this week, it's similar to the list last week, but this week I want us to ponder it in terms of control, that when God invites us to, to travel with him, to follow him, are we the ones still holding onto the steering wheels of our lives or are we letting God do it? You know, after a few years of seeing that God is my co-pilot um, uh, bumper sticker, another one came out that I think says it's so much better. And here's the image of that one. That's right, if God is our co-pilot, we need to switch seats. <laughs> let God take control of our lives. Let God be the one who, who rules our lives and that we travel with. 
because when he has his hands on the steering wheels of our lives and, and journeys uh, takes us in the journey of it, he is the one who makes it a blessing, even no matter where we might go. So let this be our encouragement from scriptures as well. This comes out of Galatians chapter 2. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but it is Christ who lives in me. This life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Y'all, let us completely die to ourselves. Let us get into God's vehicle and travel with the Lord who is leading us and driving us. And in that space, then, we consider who we drive along with, who we bring in this car with us. You know, the amazing thing about thinking about driving in a car is you can only fit a certain amount of people. And I think that says something for our lives here in this day and age that, that yeah, we can have a million followers on Facebook, but, but it is the close people that we travel with that, that our relationships really matter. Uh, again, I shared about what it was like traveling in this big minivan, this uh, big van that we have uh, that uh, I grew up in, that 12 of us were crammed into that van. But even when we had to break down into a, a Buick Century and there were only five of us traveling, it was still a tight packed place. And so we need to consider carefully who we are traveling along with, don't we? And you know, some of the people we can't choose, uh, our family and others, God may choose them for us. And I think we see that in the scriptures here again this morning. Um, just before this, uh, this passage, in verses 49 to 50, we hear this interaction between John and Jesus. Master, said John, we saw a man driving out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he is not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. Whoever is not against you is for you. So there are people that we think may not even be worthy of getting in our vehicles, but in God's vehicle, they are the ones who, who he desires to be with us. So God may choose the people that we're there, and it's a blessing to accept that. But others, we certainly can choose, and we can choose our travel buddies wisely. We can choose the ones we want to get through life with, uh, and it's very important to do so. In the Proverbs, it says, wise is the one who travels well with others. And so... I want us to consider those you might bring alongside you in your life, the ones who are very close in the journey that you're with. Not just, you know, the followers on Facebook, but the ones who are going to be there with you day in and day out. So uh, we're driving here in the car with my lovely wife, Debbie. She actually really enjoys driving. <laughs> so do uh, you want to give a quick toot to the horn and let everybody know you're here? All right. But one of the things that uh, I've just, uh, that we both have realized that we love is taking road trips together because we just enjoy the time together driving. Uh, we enjoy the time with the kids. Um, but I think it's actually been such a greater metaphor for our marriage um, that I've been so blessed to have someone that I travel with that we just travel so well through life. And we've been through the storms. We've been through really hard things. We've been through great things. Uh, but God has really blessed me by, by bringing a travel partner along like her. So consider then in your life who you are going to bring along with you, who God may want you to have in your life. Consider some of the people that, you know, you just might need to leave on the side of the road that, uh, that aren't really going to help you to get to your journey well. Because you know what, when we think about it ultimately is when we're traveling on a road trip together with people, do you want to come out as better friends at the end or do you want to come out trying to kill each other at the end? And that's a metaphor for our lives as well, that God wants us to experience being closer with the people that we have closely around us when we get to the ends of our lives. So then ultimately that question needs to become for us then personally. How are we to the others that we travel with? How are we as ones who are partners and uh, buddies in this, uh, in this trip that we're taking where God is driving us all? You know, because the reality is our personalities really come out when we go on a road trip, don't we? Uh, I shared as well the, the wonder of this car uh, for the boys to be able to sit so comfortably, but, but we took out this middle seat here. Um, some of it's just to have some room for them to spread out, but some of it's to keep them apart, because even in a nice car like this, they will go to it. Uh, when I was sharing about being in that van that had all 12 of us in it, uh, we took another trip a few years later where a lot of my older siblings were, you know, high school, whatever. And so there were my parents and then four of us kids that were in that vehicle. Now, three bench seats mean that two people had to share a seat. So suddenly we had all this room in this big van. And wouldn't you know it, we had to fight over who had to share the bench seat. 
But then even when it became just three of us traveling in the back there, we fought over who got the long bench seat and the short bench seat. You know, that's the reality of it. Whatever we're traveling in, uh, that might give us everything that we want, but our worst personalities can come out in those tight spaces. So that's the importance again of our faith and about who Jesus in is our, in our lives. You know, when we travel through faith, uh, through life, and we do it just all on our own, and we end up being like those kids in the back, I can just imagine God screaming from the front seat, like many of us probably had, if you kids don't quit it, I'm gonna turn this car around, right? So let's let God be who is present in us. Let us be Jesus people when we are traveling along here. Here's what was going on with these disciples as they were traveling with Jesus. They had just seen him transfigured on the mountain, seen him in his true glory. And as they're coming down from the mountain, making this turn to Jerusalem, we hear these words that they start fighting about who's going to be greatest in the kingdom of heaven. But it's, it's inherent in all of us. We just have this brokenness in it. And it, it comes so much to fruition when we are close together. So let us consider then the power of salvation in Jesus Christ. Uh, again, the gospel can be summed up in a couple ways, that Jesus Christ saved us from ourselves, all the brokenness that we have in us, so that we can live like him in our lives. But the Holy Spirit, God's word living out through us, saves us from each other so that we can live together in him. So let us consider how we live with others in our lives, how we travel alongside with them. Here again is a text from Colossians 3. We had shared this last week about what it is for us when we live with each other in Christ. Starting in verse 12, we hear these words. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved by God, clothe yourselves with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness and patience. You think that'll help our road trips together a little bit easier? It goes on to say, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And so be thankful. Y'all, let us travel like Christ travels. Let us have Christ travel in us when we are with each other in this. Because the importance is how we get along with each other has a great impact on who we meet along the way. And that's where we look to uh, for the aspect of our trips is those we meet along the way on the road there. So in all of these places, the importance of us, of who we are on the trip, in the vehicle that we're in, has impact upon them. Jesus said it to his disciples in this way. He said, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Because by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. God wants us to be able to get out into this world, in, in, in this vehicle, this journey of life as disciples. But people see us out there on the roadway and they can tell how we are traveling, can't they? They can tell if we're a family that's getting out at a rest stop and just bickering to each other. They see that in the church as well. So the importance of us traveling well together is because we bring that to everybody that we meet along the way. So let us consider then about who we meet along the way of our, our journey as disciples with God. And continuing right after chapter 9, Jesus then sends out 72 into the wilderness to go preach and proclaim the kingdom of God. So let me pick up these words in, in the first part of chapter 10 to see what it is for us to consider who we meet along the way of the journey of our lives. So after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to go to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Go, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace be with you to this house. If a person of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. If not, it will return to you. Stay in that house eating and drinking whatever they give you for the worker deserves their wages and do not move around from house to house and when you enter a town and are welcomed say, say uh, eat what is set before you in that town heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of god is near you 
But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your own town that sticks to our feet, we wipe off against you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is still near. So y'all, let us uh, ponder these words when we go through our journey of life as disciples of Christ. And I think that's the importance for us that anywhere that we are going, it's not just on vacation, it's not just to our jobs, it's not just to the, to the supermarket. God has in mind the people that we will meet along the way. That every journey that we take, God has in mind those that we will come, come along uh, as we greet them along the way. So let us, when we consider road trips, let's first consider those interesting people we might meet along the way. You know what I'm talking about. I've been, uh, you know, when we saw the clip from RV, uh, the Gornicki family that was so well played, uh, just, you know, that quirky family. And we hear in his speech, like that was how he first was his first impression of them was just a quirky, weird family. But then he realized that they're just good people that he was honored to be with. Uh, I've been thinking also about National Lampoon's vacation of Crazy Cousin Eddie. You know, we've all got folks out there that we know are just a little bit, um, you know, interesting. Uh, but the reality is we might be those people as well for others traveling along. So, so Jesus again reminds us, don't judge anyone lest you take the speck out of our own eyes before we start judging the, plank, the, uh, the speck in others. Let's take the plank out of our own eyes. So first and foremost, it's just that humility that we have going along the way. But even when we consider those that um, we might think uh, are not welcoming of us, and that's where this scripture here kind of turns to, to what is going on when we come into those bad places of the world. Um, and so even Jesus says there, when they don't welcome us in the name of Jesus, that is when the judgment happens. But, but mindful again, this doesn't happen until the end of our first meeting, these people. And this doesn't happen as the heart of Jesus Christ to start with with those, people, those folks. So even when we consider those who may not welcome us, even when we consider the, the brokenness of this world and, and even the evil that is out there, yes, we need to be mindful of it. But more so for most of the folks that we might meet, meet along the way, we see them with the eyes of Christ. Uh, let me remind us again that just prior to this, in that, that selection of Luke 9 that we were reading, Again, the disciples go into the Samaritan village and were not welcomed. It's the same language in that verse to this verse 10. So it's about not being welcomed. But in that place, when the disciples wanted to rain down hellfire on them, Jesus rebukes them and says, go on to another village. So that's our heart as well, that, that as we journey through life and we consider the folks that we might need, even the ones that don't seem to welcome us, that, that might be the ones who are completely opposed to us, God still has it in our hearts uh, to not completely judge them and throw them away. That's all God's duty. Our duty is just to go and to be with them as Jesus Christ is. And so let's consider that then. Let's consider about who we are when we've clothed ourselves in Christ as we journey out for Christ. Again, this, this uh, chapter 10 reveals again this, this God who is in the wilderness sending us out to go and meet him there already. And this scripture again starts with us who go out to proclaim God's presence there. And that's the importance of our journey to travel and be with others and meet others because God is already there as well. So think again as we start this chapter 10, as, as they are sent along there, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. God has a mission in mind for us when we meet others on the walk of our lives. So he sends us out into this harvest field. He tells us that we are going to be sometimes lambs among wolves, that this, this world is a broken place, but we still go out there for those wolves that are out there uh, even. And he tells us to travel lightly. Don't take a purse or bag with us. And I think this is just all the baggage that we might bring out in life with us. Don't let that be what people get dumped on when we're out there in life. But when we meet others, we come with the lightness of Christ. Knowing that again, yeah, God's got the steering wheel of our lives. Uh, we hardly even need to pack anything. The most important thing that we pack is Jesus Christ with us. And that's what we bring to other people as well. Jesus gets into a little bit of this concept of, of being present with the people who are there. Now certainly we travel everywhere and Jesus was sending them everywhere as well, but we see in these words again where he calls the people to, to stay in that house, don't go around from house to house. It's not saying that he doesn't want us to go to a number of different places, but I think what he is asking more of us is to be present, be at home with the people that are, we are with. You know, when we think of 
of trips that we might take when we are the travelers going through towns we kind of often just see the people there just like we might see uh, the, the sightseeing stops they're just images that are, that flash by with us reality is too often in our lives like everybody around us becomes that just flash past in the window God is telling us to stop and be present with the ones that he brings alongside us with Go into their homes, be present with them in their homes. Let them feed you, enjoy what they have to offer with you. You know, I've been amazed in the different trips I've taken that, that usually it's the interesting people along the way that become the most blessing to, to meet along the way. But it takes intentionality to stop and pause and to be present with them. And let's remember, when we take on Christ, that is who God is in Christ. Christ came out of heaven, made his home here on earth that was not his home. And that is who God is in us. That Holy Spirit that is over all of creation is God's presence everywhere. So that no matter where we stop, we stop with God there as well. So travel slowly. Travel well and be present with the people that are there. Another way that it comes to my mind is, is don't just consume the people that we're with, but invest. You know what I mean? It's, it's all the, the followers we might want online, all those things that we want for us. Or when we go to a town, we want them to serve us. God is saying we are the ones to invest and serve in others as we go along the trip. We are certainly blessed when we stop in their homes by them, but we bless them in return in the love of Christ. So again, we are the ones to say when we first enter a home, peace be with you. Not words of judgment, not words of anything else like that, but, but the peace of Christ to be present there. And he says, as we stay in, in, and enjoy their time together, these powerful words in verse 8, healing the sick claiming the presence of God in that place. For the folks that you might have in your workplace even. For the folks that you uh, have in your family that you might be going to visit this summer or have visited. Are you proclaiming the kingdom of God to them? Or are you just there for other means? Well, or sure enough, vacations are great, but God has in mind for us as travelers, as disciples, to go and share God's kingdom with them, God's love and God's presence when we are there. And so that ultimately is God's greatest commandment for us, isn't it? Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your soul and all your strength, as the scriptures proclaim. And Jesus was said right afterwards, love others as you would have God love yourself. So a couple images of what that has looked like in my life of, of traveling around here. My dad shared, again, when we took one of our first big family trips in that van, uh, it was a three-week trip from Minnesota all the way out to California and back. So needless to say, the last day of traveling, Dad was pretty excited to get back home. So he uh, shared that we were traveling back through uh, South Dakota to get into, into Minnesota. And uh, he was going a little bit fast late at night just to try to get in there. And so he got picked up on the side of the road by a state trooper. And so he stops on the side of the road. It was late at night. Uh, most all of us were asleep in the van. The state trooper comes up along the side of the car, and as he faithfully does, and uh, probably should have, shines his flashlight along the van as he's going up to the driver's side. And wouldn't you know it, as he shined the light in there, everybody started waking up. And my youngest brother, Mark, was only like two years old at the time, so that by the time he got to the front of the car, my little brother screaming, I think I was screaming, everybody was just totally up in turmoil. And this officer, just doing his faithful job, just said to my dad, sir, uh, drive very safely on the way home. I'm going to let you on your way. And <laughs> turned around and left. And sometimes, yes, we just need to have that humility, even when we know the law is there, to, to be present with the folks and understand what they might be going through and to, to help them and serve them in that place. But even more deeply in that is some of the friendships I've made. I shared I grew up in Minnesota, moved down to Florida. I've, I've, I'm a traveler here. I've lived here longer now than I have in Minnesota, but, but I've been so blessed by some of the great friendships of those who welcomed me in uh, when I came down there. And one family in particular, the Lloyds, uh, if you all are watching here, love you all. Uh, they, in particular, they have uh, uh, two sons that are a little bit younger than I, but they took me in as kind of a surrogate son there, invited me over for family uh, gatherings. A lot of the fun that we had together, I ended up uh, living with 
Corey uh, when I was finishing up seminary. So he journeyed with me when I was finishing seminary and ordination. So deeply invested in my life when I heard the calling into ministry. Um, this Bible that I have that you often see me with was their, uh, their gift to me on their wedding. Uh, that was my first wedding that I officiated was this family that was my family down there. Uh, so I get choked up in it because it was their welcoming of me who was out on the road, out in the wilderness, uh, drawing me into their home and investing in me. Y'all, I want you to use these images for us to consider the journeys of our lives, of the people that we travel with, first and foremost in Jesus Christ, the one who invites us into such a wonderful life of love beyond anything and everything that we could ever possibly imagine. I want you to ponder who we travel with in the body of Christ, in the family of Christ, the blessing of having these folks who are so closely connected to us through the blood of Christ. I want you also to consider those that you might have taking along in your vehicle that really are not making your life much better at all. That yes, God can say to us that, you know, let's leave them on the side of the road, but for the ones you want to travel closely with, let's, let's travel together with these ones who are deeply invested in you. And then as we travel through this world and as we travel through our lives, let us consider how we travel as Christ, lightly with him, in love with others, and willing to share the love of God with all of them out there who so desperately need it. So you all, thank you for traveling with me on this journey of life. And let us travel on this journey together to share God's love with this world that so desperately needs it. Let me offer this word of prayer as we close today to, to ponder how we might take, uh, take Jesus Christ closer into our lives and let him take control of the wheel of our lives and connect us with others to travel with. Let us pray as we go forward together. The holy and gracious and loving God, we thank you again for opening the door to your vehicle for us. Lord, we surrender control of our lives to you. We let you take the wheel. We don't want you to simply be our co-pilot. We want you to be the pilot. And Lord, as we travel with you then, we thank you for others that you have brought alongside us to help us grow in our faith, to, to nourish us and encourage us, to show us all what it is, the power of living in your spirit together so that when we meet others on the road, that we have the love of Christ ready and present and real in us, that we can invest in them and bring your kingdom to reality wherever we might go. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who came to this earth uh, to travel here, to die for us so that we might travel with you and your spirit, which invites us into this great adventure of life and to the others that you call us to meet along the way. In your holy name, dear Lord, amen and amen. Well, hey, y'all, I'm back here in the sanctuary, standing in front of the organ as we prepare to give our offering this morning. Our offerings are another way for us to worship God, to let God have control of our lives and this church and, and our means to be able to support what God wants to do. Uh, so we offer them out of our worship to God and also in our service to, to who we all are as the family and friends of St. James United Methodist. And as we've been pondering God who invites us to join with others along the journey, in a few moments, you're gonna have a chance to meet our new organist, Joanna Jimenez. Uh, we've had wonderful ministry out of Candace over so many years as she's gone on to, uh, to, to her next level of her career, but Joanna has come to bless us with her gifts and her talents for our organ and piano and in training students as well. Uh, but our worship ministry, even in this virtual space, I pray that you recognize uh, how meaningful it is for us to, to have the means to worship well in this space and even wherever we might uh, be worshiping. For all of the wonderful musicians and the staff and the instruments and everything else that we have for it, this is just one aspect of what our offerings do to enhance us who worship together wherever we might be. Again, being together in this uh, worship that we have. Your offerings to our worship ministry uh, bless us in that way. So I wanna remind you again of the various ways that you can give, primarily digitally, just the easiest way. If you text to the number 77977, the keyword is SJ Tampa, that'll get you into our giving portal. If you're on the web, you can go to our website at stjamestampa.org slash give, and that'll get you into our giving portal as well. And if you want to send a check to the church, by all means, just make it out to St. James UMC. And uh, we will receive all of these to bless the ministries here at the church to join us in worship to this God of wonder that we serve and travel with so well. 
So as we prepare for uh, giving our offering and hearing an anthem, I want you to uh, be introduced to Joanna a little bit more closely with the time that I had to sit down together with her. So let us watch this and enjoy getting to know her, her music with us, and let us give graciously and generously to God and God's work through us. Well, St. James, family and friends, I'm excited to be here today with Joanna Jimenez. Uh, she is our new organist, pianist, and, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna be a teacher as well of music here at St. James. Uh, we've been blessed with the ministry of Candace. She's been able to take a, a next step in her uh, career, but we are blessed by you taking a step here to be with us. And so thank you for hearing the call from Olini and being willing to come and, and join us here at the church. So uh, I am uh, here just to kind of help you to get to know the church a little bit and the church to get to know you a little bit more. So uh, friends and family just uh, want to share, we are blessed with, uh, with Joanna and all the, the great training and education that you've experienced throughout your life. You know, uh, looking here at some of what uh, you all have shared here, but the conservatory in Zimbabwe, uh, then going to Georgetown College for a bachelor's degree in organ and piano, and then going on to Campbellsville University for a master's degree in organ and piano as well. And so uh, there's such a blessing for us to receive all of this training and talent and experience that you bring to it. But, uh, but I think for us in the church, um, what, what wanted to know just where your first passion and love for organ and piano even started from. So um, we had a piano in our house. Both my mother and father played, not professionally, but they both played the piano. So we had a piano there. And from the time that I was a little girl, I would sit at the piano and, and just play. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was always there playing. So finally, my parents took me to a, um, a teacher in the town where we live and asked if um, she would take me as student. And she said, asked how old I was. I had just turned six and she said, I do not take students until they're seven years old. My parents said, well, she spends all of her time at the piano. So the teacher agreed to give it a try for one month and then decide, well, I never quit. And with that teacher or never quit taking lessons all of my life. Um, and my dad was a pastor. And uh, then when I was young, he and my mother accepted the call to go to Zimbabwe as missionaries. And uh, I had wonderful training there in a uh, conservatory out of uh, London, the Royal College of Music of London. And then I came back to the United States to go to college. That's when I got my bachelor's degree. When I finished that, is when I went to Brazil with the mission board uh, to work with missionaries, but in the field of music, in a school and the church where they were serving. So uh, that two year period turned into 28. I loved it and, uh, and stayed down there. Uh, I After the two years, I didn't continue working in the school, which was a school from, well, pre-kindergarten all the way through high school. Uh, but I did continue working in the church um, as pianist and organist. I was there for 28 years. I also taught piano uh, privately at my home. We had a music school at church, uh, and so I, I taught in that as well. Um, let's see, oh, for a while I was the head of the music department of our seminary. Um, so then I came back to the United States and that's when I got my master's degree. And uh, I have always worked in churches, um, even when I returned to the United States. I was pianist and or organist at different churches. Up till the time that I left Kentucky in September of 2016 and moved down here. 
a love of such a lifelong passion of wanting to learn and grow even uh, you know through all the years of ministry and uh, I'm just even now getting to hear more and more just the, how God can use us in mission uh, and so it's so exciting to hear that so um, again you've heard some of her story already but you have been kind of everywhere on mission and music <laughs> with the Lord uh, over to Africa South America here in the States and everything else like that so uh, maybe you can think of just a couple stories of some of the most unique things that God had called you into in those different places that you have been um, I'll go back to when I started organ because my beginning was with with piano but when we were living in Zimbabwe I, um, my parents asked me one day, don't you think it would be a, wouldn't you like to learn to play the organ? Well, that had never even entered my mind, but I said, sure. And um, so I began to study, I was 15, I began to study with an organ professor. He had his degree in organ, uh, from the Royal Conservatory of Music in London and was living in Zimbabwe. So I studied with him uh, and right away started playing the organ in the church uh, where I was a member. But then not too long after that, and this was scary, he, the school where I went to, the high school, uh, we had chapel every week. Now this was not a, um, a Christian school. This was a uh, just a, a school in the city, one of many, uh, and they had chapel every week. And it was these these were British schools, so very formal and everything. And there was this huge pipe organ. And he said, "I want you to start playing in chapel." Well, I was terrified. And still remember to this day playing this organ uh, for chapel. Had to have a, a piece and then also accompany the hymns. So he, it was a gradual thing, but that that was scary. That was very impressionable. Yes. Well, I'll be honest. Even just looking at our organ with all the <laughs> keys and pedals and everything, any, any of them would be. But so glad to see you got us. You know, got you over that to be able to provide it everywhere that we've been to. So. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, again, after all the travels that you've been through, uh, you're landed here at St. James. And so mm -hmm. we're uh, looking forward to uh, many wonderful years in ministry. And so just kind of wondering what maybe hopes and dreams you might have uh, in your ministry here and what we might be a part of with the, the worship ministry that we're, we have here. Well, I, my passion, besides playing, is teaching. And I've always taught students. And so... Um, I would love to teach anyone who would like to learn piano or even the organ. Uh, and once you have a basis in piano, then you know you can be, begin to work into the organ. And uh, it would thrill me if there would be some people that would who, even one person, that would want to learn to play the organ because. The, this instrument is more rare these days, but it's not an instrument that's going to go away. In fact, there has been more of a rebirth recently. And uh, yes, I would love to teach one, someone and then maybe pass that on to them. All right. Well, y'all, there's the invitation for us, uh, yes. for anybody who might be interested, but uh, I think that uh, also as we've been looking at our mission in the church of just growing as disciples and, and the different gifts that we have here, uh, it's great to hear your heart to help others who might be uh, have that passion within them and not even know it. So we we'll pray for blessing on, on that part of our ministry here as well. Uh, Y'all, as we go into our giving and our act of worship here, um, that's the invitation. It, you, you might just have an interest in this. And I, come, uh, come and talk to Joanna and uh, Alini about how they might be able to help you in it. Uh, but uh, we're going to have a chance to hear now a piece from Joanna as we are giving our offerings, uh, again, to support the ministries of worship and, and growth in our faith here at St. James. So, Joanna, thank you so much for being with us. And we we'll look forward to many more years. Yes.
the doxology. Thank you for worshiping again with us here at St. James this morning. We pray you felt the invitation of God to get on the journey of life with him and let him take control of the steering wheel for you. We pray you can experience the wonder of great fellowship and relationship in the family of Christ 
and encourage you to do so here at the church. Uh, by all means, share and like on social media. Follow us with all the great things we have going on in the church. Even in COVID, uh, we are ministering together and we're going to be ministering to the community as well. And, then, and take that love that you feel today uh, to go and be a good traveler with others around you. I want to invite you to come back for worship next week where we're going to consider all the places we go with God. And uh, to get us ready for that, we're inviting everyone to share pictures of their favorite travels. Maybe you did actually take a trip this summer or maybe uh, one of the favorite places you've been to in your life. Uh, just take a picture and uh, email it to info at stjamestampa.org. We're going to share a nice fun photo slideshow to celebrate all the various places in this world that God may send us to. But let me offer this blessing and benediction for your week as we go and live for God. That may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And as you turn to God and hear him inviting you into this relationship together, may you find peace and joy in your souls. And may you know the love of God that passes all understanding and carry that love into this world with all that you might meet. Take care, y'all. God bless.